Time to see how the rest of the series is coming out. And yes, I did get to DVR this and watch it for myself. I'm Mega Man NG and I welcome you to another Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode review. If you're wondering about how this is, is because I don't want this video to get claimed by Hasbro compared to last week. And if it does, and if this episode ends up getting claimed, I give. I'm just going to upload for the heck of it and it's not like I'm going to make money off it. I should mention that you all should support me on Patreon if you can. But anyway, yeah, today we'll be talking about Episode 2, Evox Revenge. I'll provide a synopsis as well as some of the main points of focus. And let me say it here, this episode is good. Let's begin. After the events of last week's episode, the avatars for Blaze and Roxy end up in the Cyber Dimension, crossing paths with Scrozzle. Evox shows up and gives Scrozzle one objective. Recover as much Morphex as possible so he can be able to enter the real world. Meanwhile, the Rangers get a first-hand look of, on their gear, such as the Beast Bots, as well as their Zords. But Commander Shaw wishes that a leader be selected, and when that happens, the Power Rangers are at odds. Can the Rangers decide while having to contend with Evox's forces? Yes, that's pretty much the main point of this episode, but this episode also introduces a number of firsts. For starters... Beast Morphers follows the show in a serialized format, similar to some shows like Operation Overdrive. And yes, I know that there are going to be some people that are going to say otherwise, but I did like Operation Overdrive, even though many consider it to be one of the worst Power Rangers seasons in the Disney era ever. And believe me, it's not as bad. Not as bad, but it isn't that great. Anyway, I do like the idea that it's in a serialized format to the point where at the start of the episode, they show a recap of what happened in the previous one. I like that because it's short. It also gets you up to speed on what happened. And being that it at one episode ended to set things up for the other, it's pretty cool and I like it. But anyway, yeah, we get a lot of many firsts here. This episode marks the first appearance of the Beast Bots, the Zords, along with a villain inventor and the foot soldier mooks. Let's start with the Beast Bots first. Each ranger has their personal Beast Bot, and the Beast Bots are as follows. Cruz, Smash, and Jax. Cruz is voiced by Kelson Henderson, and it's Devin's Beast Bot that turns into a motorcycle. And anything that turns into a motorcycle is awesome. Smash, which is Ravi's, is voiced by Charlie McDermott. And yeah, who would have thought I'd be hearing him again? As well as Jax, voiced by Emmett Skelton. He, or, yeah, he is Zoe's B-Spot. And they also provide a secondary help, assisting in operating the Rangers' respective Zords. And yes, they're, they're, each of them get their own Zords. The most interestingly enough is the Beast Range Racer Zord, which converts into a battle mode. The other two Swords, the Beast Wheeler and Beast Chopper, are pretty much support Zords that help the Red Ranger. And hopefully a few episodes later we'll get to see the Mega Zord happen. I look forward to that when it comes. Also, on the villain side, we meet Scrozzle former ruler of the Cyber Dimension, who now works as Evox's chief scientist and inventor. Evox is voiced by Cam Cooley. The most interesting thing is that Scrozzle does not have a Sentai counterpart, which makes them a Power Rangers exclusive villain similar to Lord Zed. I actually kind of like that, and I also feel he's like an evil version of Alpha 5, being that he is an assistant to Evox for better or worse, and also serves as the, as the evil villain's inventor and chief designer. He's also responsible for the season's foot soldiers slash mooks, called the Tronics. Not to mention he designs the monsters, as well as the Giga Drones, basically gigantic versions of Evox's monsters. One of the monsters that we saw was the Cyclotron, pretty much used when you combine Morph Axe and corrupt it with Evox's virus. Not only that, but this episode also shows that while the Rangers have bonded with animal DNA, they also share flaws. It's pretty similar to Go Busters, where the Rangers have drawbacks in exchange for the powers they have. For example, Devin, aka Red Buster, whenever he sees a dog, whether it be a real dog or a dog in a poster, he freezes at the sight of it. I have to wonder if it's mostly due to the fact that maybe he was like hurt by a dog in a flashback, but we may find that out eventually. I don't really know for sure, but compared to the Sentai version where Red Buster pretty much would freeze at the sight of a chicken. 
I'm not kidding. With sight, at, I mean, it would pretty much freeze seeing a chicken. As weird as Sentai can be, it could be a lot worse. The others, well, theirs is a bit more tame, although Ravi's is the most interesting because since Ravi gains super strength due to the gorilla DNA, the only drawback is that he goes berserk and can't differentiate between friend or foe. Pretty much he has him ending in a berserk state that could really be problematic for the team. Zoe, on the other hand, suffers from quick exhaustion, not only due to power overuse, but due to the fact of having to bond with the kangaroo DNA. And you want to know what restores her energy? Eating carrots. I'm not kidding. Eating carrots can help revitalize her energy. It does provide a nice balance to their powers, especially when they're morphed, but it's a bit weird. Thankfully, they don't affect them outside. Because if it did, then that would really be unfair. I like that it's only affected during their morph form, not an unmorphed. The episode itself is pretty solid, with the plot focusing on the Rangers being at odds over leadership responsibilities. But it's mostly Ravi and Zoe, because turns out Devin by default makes for a good leader. I mean, Ravi and Zoe were arguing over leader responsibilities, while Devin had more pressing matters. Even comes to the point where Devin even provides advice to not let it get to their heads. It's pretty cool and I liked it, which pretty much confirms that Devin does have what it takes to be a leader really does. The fight scenes are good, but I especially like the unmorphed fight that happened in the episode. There needs to be more unmorphed fights like these, because I don't want it to always be restricted during their morph forms. Having unmorphed fights shows that the rangers outside of their powers are just as skilled as when they do have powers. And yes, the show does use footage for Go Busters, and at least for me, it's acceptable. I do look forward to see how they can pull the rest of the show off, but judging by how things are, it's actually doing quite well. Heck, even the comic relief actually turned out to be helpful. I mean, I'm not kidding. During a scene when Red Buster was frozen at the side of the dog, well, let's just say that, yeah, Ben and Betty had to help him by distracting the mook. It actually proved to be helpful and shows that Ben and Betty are not too, not taken too seriously. Because I'm reminded of Bulk and Skull in the earlier seasons that they can actually hold their own. I'm surprised that they could. Hopefully, as the series went on, I hope to see these two develop. Because if there's one thing I like about a show, is that I feel that characters, no matter who they are, whether they be comic relief or otherwise, get to develop to be better characters. I hope that they can do that. Because I feel that this series is very promising, as I mentioned in the first episode. Surprisingly, Devin's dad does not make an appearance in this episode. And I'm okay with that. I really am. My final score is an 8.5. It's a very good episode. Continues from the events of the first episode. And I look forward to what episode 3 will bring out. Hopefully this will give us more of an opportunity to see what the characters are about. The same can be said for the villains. Especially since we do get to see Blaze in action with his evil avatar form. Which I will admit it does help the levity of this. It really does. Not to mention my only flaw is the morphing sequence. I don't know why, but the morphing sequence, they have to watch from Go Busters, and they have to use a key to turn it, so that the key to insert the watch, turn it so their visors can come out, and then they morph. I'm not too convinced on that, because I kind of liked it better if they did it like in Go Busters with, it's morphing time, and then they, they morph, and then they place the morphing device close to them, and they say, let's morphin. I kind of like it there, but this is Power Rangers, and they have their own way of doing this. Not to mention it does pretty much helpful in terms of toy sales because they're pretty much a giant toy commercial. I'm not complaining, but the episode is good. Flaws aside. So anyway, yeah, like I mentioned already in the beginning of this video, the only reason why you're not seeing a screenshot from the show is because I don't want this video to get claimed by Hasbro. Last week's video did, and even though I did dispute it under fair use... The dispute was not approved, so I have to get my network involved. I'm still waiting even now, but it's not like I don't make much money off these things. To all who did watch the episode review, you have my sincerest thanks. And this only gives me a reason to continue doing this. And besides, I want to branch out because when I do, I, do, I do Rise of the TMNT reviews, I do Ace Attorney reviews, and now this. I just only hope things don't make it any more difficult than they should be. Look forward to episode 3 next week. That is it for this review. If you enjoy it, please be sure to hit the like button. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. 
Doing it all helps to my benefit. And if you would like to support this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar a month. I'm looking for new patrons. Remember, it's not mandatory, it's optional. That's it. This is Mayman NJ signing off. Peace out. See you next week. Let's morphin'.